Hi, I'm Jim Heffron from the University of Vermont. This video is to help you do better at college mathematics. So most folks don't know what to do when they get to college because they have a different circumstance in college than they had in high school. When you were in high school, it was your instructor who was in charge of whether or not you learned. But in college, it's on you. This presentation will help you step up to the next level, help you do better in a college mathematics class. Just to be specific, just to make my recommendations as concrete as possible, I'll address a Calculus 1 student, although the advice applies to pretty much any math class they would take in the first couple of years. This is a first take, so I'm going to be brief and I'm going to be prescriptive. I'm going to say, do this, do this, do this. If you want to learn the general principles, if you want to learn much, much more, there's a couple of links right here in the video. Okay, so, uh, so for starters, item number one. You need a schedule book. You need it to be a paper book. And every time you get an assignment for homework, every time you get a reading assignment, every time you get told what day the exam is going to be on, every information that you get needs to go in the book the moment that you get it. The instructor says, okay, so for homework, and you instantly reach out, take, take out the book and, and start writing it down. That book also maps out your weekly study plan. So study plan. Every week, you need to study two hours outside class for every hour that you spend in class. That's a rule that generations of students have found to be pretty much a good guide. Now, of course, sometimes plans change. I mean, you know, maybe this one week you, you, you had you had to go to the registrar during the time that you were scheduled to study math. That's fine. That's fine. But what you'll find is after a couple weeks, you work out a regular schedule. Maybe, you know, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you go to the library and you study math. Maybe Monday and Friday, you're doing a history class. And on Sunday mornings, you're reading the reading that you're supposed to do for English. So you work out some kind of regular plan. A regular plan that you monitor and make sure it's working for you is a big help in succeeding. It means that you have a pattern. You have a way of living and that. That's, that's really the way to be successful. It helps you calibrate your effort across classes. Pomodoro. So you need to get a timer. This is my timer. I keep it on my desk. Pomodoro is the person who invented it, was an Italian person, and he had a timer that looked like a, a, a tomato. You know, you turn the top, tick, 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 tick. And the po Pomodoro is the Italian word for tomato. So the idea is that you work for 25 minutes without interruption, and then you take a break for five minutes. You use the timer to impose some discipline on what you're doing. You're doing, for these 25 minutes, you're doing math. You're not, you know, going to the bathroom. You're not getting up and getting a snack. You're doing math. Okay, so, uh, so Pomodoro is a way to organize your time that makes sure that you're focused on what it is that you're doing. Notebook. Every class needs its own notebook. Don't get one of these five classes to a notebook book. Use that notebook both for class notes and for homeworks. Every day, you open it up to a fresh page, you put the date on the top of the page, and you enter whatever it is you're entering, whether it's notes or whether it's homework. You, you know, homework number one, and you write the answer. Homework number three, and you write the answer kind of stuff. If you see something that gives you trouble, if you get sort of the three, five, seven, but you don't get nine, then you, you write a big asterisk in the margin next to problem number nine, and maybe you write down, don't see what to do with the K. So you try to be as specific as possible. And the next class, when the instructor comes in and says, you know, who has trouble with the homework, you raise your hand and you say, and number nine, you know, I don't see what you're supposed to do with the K. That is to say, you're using this notebook as a way to get your questions answered. They are helping you, the, the notebook and notes are helping you to do your work. Another example of that is if you go to office hours and, and you say to the instructor, I'm having some trouble with this section here. Okay, what's the trouble? Well, for example, in number 23, I, I did the problem and my algebra came up with three minuses, but the book the book got an answer that's a plus. What, what, what's, what's the discrepancy? Okay, and then the last thing. Just, just to be, just to be an old guy who, who finger wags. You know, all of us have a phone. All of us have trouble putting it down. All of us have trouble getting our work done when the phone rings and somebody's texting you. No, 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 no. The person who's calling you or texting you can wait until your pomodoro is done. You need to be focused on what you're doing when you're doing it. You know, if you're there for 25 minutes and somebody texts you after 10 minutes, just wait the 15 minutes and reply in 15 minutes. Don't even check to see who it was. 
just wait the 15 minutes and reply in 15 minutes okay very important that no phone rule also applies to no music please i i see people they study and they got these things in their ears they're they're doing 80 percent math and 20 percent so music no i don't think so i think they've made themselves 20 percent dumber before they even started that's just not a way to success the way to success is when you're doing music you're doing music when you're doing math you're doing math okay <laughs> Okay, so the uh, the 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 next in the next page is this page is really the key page. Two points on this page that a person needs to understand about the the sort of big idea about the sort of theory. First, a person learns the most by actively engaging with the material. Just watching is not a help. If you go to class and you just watch the instructor, you're just watching them go through the steps. You know, you learn more than if you had been watching a movie, but you didn't learn the material, you really didn't. If you get on the internet and you watch Khan Academy and you just watch it, you, you know, you really didn't get out of it what you need to get out of it. In particular, if you're a person who has taken the class before, maybe you didn't do so good on the AP test and you come in and you say, well, I really know this section. No, you have to engage with it or you're not learning it. You didn't do good, well on the AP test. It means you need to go back and engage with it fresh. Okay, so as an example, if you raise your hand and say, please, I'd like to see you do number nine. If you have not done number nine before, you're just watching. If you have already tried number one, nine and you got stuck on this part here and you watch the instructor do it, then when the instructor gets to that part there, you say, oh, I see. Yeah, you were supposed to use the trigonometric identity. Okay, I didn't get it. And then next time, you're more likely to remember what to do. In particular, there's a sort of theory behind everything that we do here is the theoretical point is that research and learning has proved that the brain, your brain is not like a computer. You don't take something and put it somewhere. That's just not how brains work. If a person is reading the section five times, six times, and they're going, oh, I'm gonna re-memorize this. They're, they're trying to stuff that information in location 5324. That's just not how brains work. In fact, evolution's twisting path has made it so that brains learn, memories are made firm by retrieving them over and over again from long-term storage. It's a weird way to do things, but that's how evolution has done them. If you want to remember something, you need to, to retrieve it today and retrieve it tomorrow and retrieve it on Saturday and retrieve it the Saturday after that, and maybe a month after that. If you keep going back and getting that information over and over again, that's how the information really gets in there, gets retrievable. In particular, drilling. Drilling only uses short-term storage. If you're having trouble with some material and you say, I'm just gonna bang on this. So I'm gonna do number three, number five, number seven, number nine, number 11. Well, by the time you get to seven, nine, 11, you're using the same information over and over and over again. That is to say, you're getting it from short-term storage. You're not retrieving it from long-term storage. In order to make the memory stick, in order to make it easily achievable, you need to get in there and retrieve it from long-term storage. So in addition to mastering new material, one of the things you need to be practicing when you're studying is fetching old material. Okay, so 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 down, down to brass tacks. What are you doing? Self-test. You have to make up a self-test. For each of your Pomodoros, you make up a quiz of f five questions. Use the questions where you'll be able to find out whether the answer is right or wrong. So you'll get instant and correct feedback. So for math, that often means do odd numbered problems because the answers are in the back of the book. Okay. Second, spaced repetition. This is the point about, the, about research and learning is that of the five questions, make two of them cover material from last week or last month. The other three are going to cover new material that you're trying to master, but it's very important to keep going back and refetching that old material. Very important to keep going back and getting it from long-term storage. That's how it gets to be fetchable because you practice fetching it. Work on your weaknesses. The feedback that you get from the self-test and the space repetition will reveal to you what it is that you have trouble with. Maybe you come to a section and, and you're doing pretty good on some of the problems, but the, the problems that have some, some uh, trig in them give you a lot of trouble. So that's what you ought to be practicing. You ought to be practicing the problems with the trig in them. The other ones that are easy, the ones that you breeze through, you don't need to practice them nearly as much, but you need to be banging on the ones with the trig. Work mostly on the stuff that gives you trouble, not on the stuff that gives you less trouble. So 
it's bad bad news maybe but if you're finding that the studying is easy then you're probably not doing it right if you're finding that the studying is a bit of an effort that you're really kind of scratching your head oh man what is that again oh you have to do the uh, I have to move the x to the other side of the then probably you're doing it just about right now if it's murder that's not right either but if you're finding it to be a bit of an effort then probably you're doing it just about right Okay, I'm an example guy, so you know, so here, here's an example. So uh, suppose I'm imagining that it's my calculus one class. Suppose it's Friday of the first week, okay, and you, 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 you've drawn me. Friday of the first week and your class covered section 2.3, and I've assigned homeworks 11 to 23 odd, all very routine. Now here it is Saturday morning, you went to the library, you found a quiet spot, you got your book, you got your notebook, you got your pencil, you're sitting there and you say to yourself, what is it that I actually do? What, 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 what am I doing? What, what steps am I doing that will be most likely to succeed at this math class? So, following what we said on the prior slides, two hours outside of class means four Pomodoros. Okay, so four Pomodoros. So the first Pomodoro, probably you're going over the class notes. You got to do it actively. You can't just read them and say, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You, if you take out a pencil, if you come to an example, you, you put down the, the problem and then you, you start trying to work it. Maybe you don't get past the third step. You say, oh, I don't see what to do. Okay, so you have a little peek. What did your instructor? Oh, that's right. You got you to move it to the other side of the equation and divide by the square root. That's right. Okay, but you engaged with it before you had a peek. You were working at it. You were not just reading saying, uh, -huh, uh -huh, I could do that. Okay, so next, three more Pomodoros in front of you. What do you do? So these consist of doing problems, not of reading the material, not of using those yellow crayons to color things in. These consist of doing problems. For instance, just, just to take the first one, uh, you're going to pick two problems for review. So you flip through some previous sections. Maybe you found a chapter one, section four is on exponentials. And we didn't cover that. We expect that you know it, but nonetheless, you're going to be expected to know it. So you say, well, I'll do some of those. Okay, great. Go to the homework exercises and you find two of them. Uh, how about the number 11, number 23? Odd numbers, answers in the back of the book. Right? Not number one, probably too easy. Not number 81, probably too hard. 11, 23, those are probably good numbers. For the remaining three, for the three that are on new material, you go to the section that you did that Friday, section 2.3, and maybe you pick uh, from the book you're leafing through, maybe you pick example nine, and uh, instructor asks you to do 11 and maybe 19. Okay, good. So you have a you have a self test that consists of five questions. And now off you go. Start the timer. If you get stuck on a problem, don't be like, oh ma, I'm such a dope. Why don't I know how to do? Just give it a couple seconds. If you don't get it, you really gave it an honest try, and you don't get it. Okay, have a peek. You do an example nine, for example. You say, I just don't see what to do. You have a quick look at example nine. Oh, that's right. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. That's right. And then you go forward. Okay, of course, if there's one that gets you stuck and you just don't see how to do it, number 11, just, you just don't see how to do it. Okay, so you write it in your homework notebook, put a big star next to it. When you go in on class on Monday and the instructor says, who, who has questions from the homework? You raise your hand and say, number nine, I don't understand what to do with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Very important that you write down your work. I've seen people who say, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I, no, that's not studying. <laughs> no, that's pretending to study. Okay, so after four Pomodoros, after two hours, you'll know it. You'll, you'll put your stuff in your backpack and say to yourself, okay, well, I, you know, I, I accomplished some useful work here. Maybe you have a good question or two to ask in class. I want to emphasize, having a question, that is to say, you get up to, 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 to the limits of what you know in this section, and, and, then, and then you say, I'm stuck, I need a push. Okay, well, that's how people learn. People learn iteratively. That's, that's the lesson of the prior three slides, is that you keep going at it, going at it, going at it, and after a while, you say, all right, success. All right, very good. Okay. All right, good, good, good luck in your studies. Very nice.